This is, there's a nicer version in the zine, but this is like the, the in real life version because um, it's about uh, the San Francisco Bay Area, which is where I'm from and where some of my friends who are here tonight are from. Um, and this happened last winter uh, and it's called Moon Rocks. <laughs> I was visiting my family and desperate to escape the suburbs. My friend Daisy Duke is a gay punk star and told me about a party at a bar downtown. I found a huge nightclub, shiny haired girls in tight dresses lined up down the street. Lots of security, people being patted down. It was that thing of the destination being adjacent to but not exactly located at the spot. I was headed to the freaky queer performance art night at the dive bar hidden next door. On my way in, I saw someone had dropped a wallet. I tapped a boy in a fussy sweater on the shoulder and handed it to him. He looked mortified, and his friend thanked me (laughs) profusely. He said, oh my god, how nice of you, that's so chivalrous. I said, don't worry about it. I was very stoned. I had eaten some wheat butter I found at my parents' house, and it was kicking in. (laughs) Outside, chain-smoking later, a man walked up to me and asked for a cigarette. He was dressed in expensive-looking sportswear. He was going to the multiplex club next door. I gave him a cigarette... And he asked for a light, and I noticed that he was sipping a clear syrupy liquid out of a baby bottle. He took a sip and held the cigarette in front of his face, methodically coating it with the syrup. I gave him a lighter, he lit the cigarette, and walked away to get in line for security. I was and am fascinated. I haven't the faintest idea what it was. What kind of candy juice drug can you drink but also smoke, right? (laughs) I don't even know. It was weird. Um, I went inside to watch the show. The first act was a girl who went to high school with my little brother. She did a horror movie burlesque number where she pretended to eviscerate uh, and she seduced a sexy topless guy making out with a cow's heart, draping herself in tripe, smearing pig blood into her makeup. She's 26 and brought her own tarp. Such a pro. The next act was a goth kid from L.A. in an alien mask who sang a couple songs about feeling alone, about eternity. He said he had an album out soon and he seemed to have a lot of fans. Um, The fussy guy whose wallet I found, his friend came over and thanked me again. I'd offer to buy you a drink, but I see you already have one. It's okay, I said. You don't have to do that. I said, don't worry about it. I wonder if I should have kept his wallet. Maybe he was rich or something. But then, the last performer, Cake Boy, also from Los Angeles, Tall like me and with a mustache, so not my type. He had black nylons pulled over the top half of his face and he wore a halter top and a thong and high heels. He did a dance to a Beyonce song. He writhed around on the floor. It was grimy, but he didn't care. He was really flexible, spreading his legs, pulling one behind his head, moving as if fucking ecstatically. He crawled around the crowd on all fours. He crouched in front of me and bounced slightly with a shit-eating grin. He felt himself up. I became intensely aroused. I can't remember the last time I got hard in public all alone like this. I've never gotten an erection from watching dance before. I felt flushed, kind of embarrassed, hot red face, thank God the lights were down. The show was over, and it was one of the DJ's birthday, and people were lined up to take turns spanking him on stage to stick birthday candles up his butt. Cake Boy was in line, and he theatrically spanked the DJ. It was fantastic. I was too shy to try to say hello. Then Daisy Duke arrived and said hi to everyone and apologized for being late, and I told him about Cake Boy. I said, do you know him? He's amazing. He said, oh, you mean my friend? And his wrong Right. Okay. Yeah. He said, yeah, definitely. He definitely goes in. And Daisy Duke used his real name, his non-stage name, and he said, um, what are you doing now? Do you want to come party? He introduced me to a group of guys outside. There was the guy whose wallet I found, his grateful buddy, and another guy. The friend thanked me again and introduced the wallet boy to me. I recognized him instantly. He is a very famous fashion designer who lives here in New York. Uh, and he saw me react to his name, but I didn't make a big deal out of it because I'm not that type of girl. <laughs> Do you want to come with us? The friend said, we have a hot tub and moon rocks at my hotel room. Qu'est-ce que c'est moon rocks, I said. I've never heard of those before. The friend said, moon rocks? Ah, ce sont des cristaux du molly. Tu connais MDMA? We talked about where we're from. I'm from the East Bay. They're both from the North Bay. The other guy with them who looks like a hippie, he's from the South Bay. I bet he was the one that brought them the moon rocks. Do hippies even like Molly? Doesn't everyone? I declined to go with them, and Daisy Duke made fun of me for being chicken. The next morning, I wrote to Cake Boy online and told him I loved his performance. He asked me what I liked about it, and I said, your body, but I meant to say your butt. And he told me the idea for the act was to be Beyonce as a human Ouija board. (laughs) I haven't seen it at the time, but in retrospect, I feel like I saw a kind of communication happen.
Um, and then this is a piece uh, that's in the zine, uh, and it's sort of like where the zine came from. Actually, the zine is, it, this is actually a funny story that no one, it's, I can say it. Um, somebody asked me to donate to a Kickstarter for Mother Flawless. Sabrina was having like this fundraiser to keep her apartment, and they were like, uh, Diana Turgi and Zachary Drucker asked me if I would contribute something, and I said yes. And they asked for zines, and I was like, yeah, in fact, I'll write a whole new zine, and that'll be, like, the perk for the people who, you know, contribute, thinking no one would do it. And then, like, four people did it, and it's been, like, eight months. And so so they finally got their zine, and it was the reason that this ended up coming out. Um, so thanks, Wallace, Sabrina. Um, but this was, uh, yeah, we love her. Um, but this is a piece called Michelle, and it was a true story, and I feel like it's, like, political or something, so... <laughs> Sorry, if, if, if it offends you. <laughs> Michelle, 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 Miss Hell, Miss Hell, Miss Hell, Miss Hell, Miss Hell, Miss Hell. To tell the truth, I wanted to end it there in a way, but let's continue. Let's let's listen to the tapes. Let's review the transcript. I came to the party, this magazine party at an old gay nightclub. I could come here any night of the week and be the youngest, cutest, tightest piece of ass by like 10 years. It would be empty. I'd have my pick of the bears here. So you have this big fancy magazine party. Okay, let's get back to the magazine later. You are obviously working the door in a merry cat trans you dress. Door girl trompe loy. Wait, okay, I'm friends with Jim, the DJ for tonight, the celebrity DJ. We're friends. We're all friends. I RSVP'd. I have a right to be here. It's a free party. I read magazines. I'm queer. <laughs> At the door, Michelle, you said I could not come in. You could only let in bold-faced names. There was a list, but you didn't look at it. We're only, as I'm sure I don't need to remind you, you said, doing bold-faced names tonight. You told me to leave, to go away. You let in literally everybody else except for me. You told me I couldn't wait there near the door because I couldn't come in. I know the stakes were low, Michelle, but still you really didn't have to be so nasty. <laughs> What's not bold-faced about my name, Michelle? It's Max Steele. My name is Max Steele. I'm on the list, I think. I RSVP'd. I'm on the RSVP list. My name is Max Steele. It rolls, it rolls, it rolls off the fucking tongue, Michelle. What's not bold-faced about me? I wore my designer's that's here because I knew I was going to the fag bar, to the crusty old fag bar after work to see Jim DJ. I am bold-faced. I saved up seven fucking months at my day job to buy this outfit, Michelle. It was a birthday present to myself for my 28th birthday. I wear this shirt twice a year tops. <laughs> How old are you, Michelle? You are a checkout girl at that designer boutique downtown. I wrote online that your Mary Cat trans you dress was almost certainly borrowed. Are you an intern? Was this dress your paycheck, Michelle? Are you paid in trade, Michelle? Are you paid in discount to the store, Michelle? You wrote, you wish this dress was borrowed. Okay, I stand corrected. You wrote, fucking pathetic. But Michelle... Maybe this hasn't come up yet in Complet for Fashion Students 201, but that's not how you use the word, Michelle. I'm not pathetic, though. I'm literally the opposite. There is no pathos for me, the unbold pathos, Michelle. Look, that magazine was a magazine for straight people to appreciate drag queens. Put a straight actor on the cover in drag makeup. Hire someone to do his makeup. Call it drag. Start a revolution. Makeup, now for me. We'll show these faggot queens how to be pretty. It's like, we can take sexism and just put it on each other. This, they think, is what drag is all about. A celebration. Did it ever occur to them that some celebrations aren't just about being happy or feeling cool? So, okay, I finally snuck in after my friends argued their way past you and I ran in with them. Did you see me? All we had to do was say that the editor invited us. My friends weren't even boldface names that night either. I saw Jim DJ. He played all the old disco records, Sylvester and whatever. I saw that pop star from Sweden, the one with the fucking album six years ago and the fags still can't get over it. She sang, cool. <laughs> to the backing track of the single from the album, right on, all right. <laughs> then my friend's friend got jumped on the dance floor, coked up paparazzo, punched him in the face in the disco mosh pit in the basement of the fag bar, so we left. I've been thinking about you a lot since then, Michelle. I think you're still in school, yeah? I think... You're the type to just get married to some boring rich man and leave New York and move to the suburbs and have a kid because it's easier, right? There's no shame in it. I'm not trying to make you ashamed. I'm not trying to shame you. I'm just saying, you'll leave New York and I won't and we'll both be right in our own ways. I'm just saying, 
I'll speak at your fucking funeral and I'll be on the list. I'll be on the program. When you leave, when you die from New York, when you leave New York, I'll still be here yelling at cab drivers, waiting in lines, not getting in, not being a bold-faced name to check out girls, but I'll be here and you won't. And I'll be telling someone about this story and you'll be watching fashion shows online and cleaning up baby vomit, wondering if the puddle of baby vomit means that you, yeah, have to make lunch again. <laughs> And I wrote about that stupid night, and you saw it, and you wanted to clarify to prove it, that, in fact, I was unworthy of coming to your stupid boutique, stupid co-hosted party for that stupid fucking magazine. You made your point. Did I hurt your feelings? Was it impolite to call you out on being so fucking rude to a total fucking stranger, Michelle, for calling your dress ugly? And what I want to say to Mary Kat Transu is, I'm glad you got your shit together. But back then, you didn't have your shit together, not yet, and your dresses, some of your dresses sucked. And this girl, Michelle, wore one of your shittier dresses while she was nasty to me, so... What I want to say to Michelle is that I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Michelle. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Michelle, 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 Michelle. I feel guilty, Miss Hell, Miss Hell. Miss Hell, Miss Hell, Miss Hell. I didn't mean to make you feel bad. Just as I'm sure you didn't mean, mean to make me feel bad. You were just looking for bold-faced names, and I was just, as always, trying to prove that they don't exist. And I guess we were just both, I guess, in our own ways, just doing our jobs. Postscript, summer of 2015. I was walking home late one night recently, and I saw her on the block next to me. <laughs> next to my apartment, going into one of these fancy new high-rises. And I think she and I are neighbors now, and it's really nice to be confirmed as adjacent. Thank you guys so much. Thank you to Doug Keeler and Justin Allen and Aaron Markey and the girl of General Services. Please stick around and buy zines and books and drinks and um, have so much fun. Thank you.